Forest Green chairman Dale Vince opting to switch out Hanger Dingley from her position of interim head coach after just one game and 13 days. Who's the new manager? Uh, it's Dave Horseman, who was the under-23 manager at Southampton. He stepped up towards the end of the season to assist Ruben Seles. Uh, very highly regarded when it comes to promoting uh, youth players. I think Nathan Teller, one of his big success stories, scored a lot of goals on loan at Burnley in the Championship last season. Popular uh, with the players. Very hard worker. Uh, I, I feel sorry for him in some ways because he's almost become the forgotten man in this story because all the talk is about the fact that uh, Hannah hasn't been given the job and maybe has been used as a publicity stunt. I think he's a good guy. I think he's a good, good coach who deserves his opportunity. Um, let's speak to John and Terry. Let's start with John, who's a Sunderland fan. Hello. Hi, yeah. You're right. Uh, what do you want I to say? I think it's unfair. That's because I've been listening to the podcast. With, uh, with James in the main, Jason DeFore, and he's trying to get like a manager's job, and I think they just use it as a publicity fund. Okay, cheers, John. Thank you very much. Um, all this fuss, she was only ever going to be an interim. Granted, the announcement was a bit over the top, but only in charge of just a couple of pre-season practice games. One, actually, before they decided to change it, although she's going to take charge of the next two, apparently. Uh, not even a proper game. That's from Andy, who's texted us in. Terry is a Palace fan in the London area. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I'm very disappointed we talk sport today. Go on. Well, old Dale Vince is looking for publicity all the time. And all you're doing is giving him more and more public. He's just an egotistical maniac. Well, I suppose the reason that you have to cover the uh, news cycle is because, actually, if a chairman of a football club says this is going to be a trailblazing appointment, you're duty-bound to cover it, aren't you? You Yeah, to cover it. But now it's all blown up and everybody knows what it is for what it is. I mean, Gabby was completely right this morning. Yeah. And if you listen to Walsby and Jacobs yesterday... All he was on about yesterday was how he's going to fly planes 500 miles in the next two or three years. He's never going to do that. Do you, do you know what? I, I think you're spot on in some respects. I mean, we are obliged to cover the story. I agree with Sam, but I think we are in some ways playing into Dal Vince's hands because uh, he's being mentioned on primetime national radio. And actually, in years to come, this will be a quiz question, won't it? Who was the first female to take charge of a professional men's game? And, and actually, Dal, Dal Vince will be forever linked with that answer. He's, he's, he's going to saying, get himself a, a place in history. This is what I was saying before the break, uh, Terry. You know, is this a situ- are we in a situation now, when you look back over the course of um, the last few years, the Duncan Ferguson standing there suggesting he's going to have a vegan pie, the exactly. rainwater in the, the urinals, the world's greenish football club, the, the Eco Park, which hasn't been built yet, um, the 13-day ray of a female manager. The question is, is Forest Green Rovers actually a football club anymore or is it just a vehicle for Dal Vince to get his messages out? It's a vehicle for Dal Vince to get his messages out because if he was interested in the football club instead of giving all the money to stop oil and all the process and that he put the money in the football club and they wouldn't be in the state they're in now. Well they have been relegated at the end of last season. Terry thank you very much for your call. Andy's a Liverpool fan. Hello. Hello mate. What do you want to say? Uh, just think everyone's seen this from the wrong point of view to be honest. Go on. Um so if, if you have to have a read into what Dale has always done, then this is this is quite commonplace. Oh, we, we just lost him. Uh, it'd be interesting to get him back and, and see what point he wanted wanted to make there. But you, you know, what, what, <laughs> I did, I, what, he said it's coming what, from a different point of view. We're missing it. I mean, what, I what suppose... Dale's always done. I mean. You question now the logic in appointing Duncan Ferguson. I mean, that was a high-profile name, as you say, who himself managed to get engaged in, in some publicity stunts. Did Dal Vince hire Duncan Ferguson with very limited managerial experience, certainly very limited experience of the, the EFL, same... because he was the best person for the job, or did he hire Duncan Ferguson because he knew he could use him as well, a publicity Well, it's the tool? same thing again, isn't it? Because ultimately, let's be clear, who's actually come out better of that appointment? Forest Green Rovers, because obviously they've been in the, the headlines, and we've been talking about Big Dunk, the vegan pie. It's all a bit of a joke. Big Dunk having going vegan. All that seems like a bit of a turn of events. That becomes the narrative. That becomes the conversation. But whose career has been harmed by by that appointment. Duncan yeah. Ferguson's. Because prior to that, people were talking about him being the next Everton manager. That won't be the conversation now. And actually, I spoke to somebody close to Big Dunk when it became clear that he was leaving Forest Green and the message I got back was, he's had enough. Or what's he had enough of? I, I suggest he's had enough of Dal Vince uh, and his publicity gags. Simon is a Stoke fan. Hello. 
Hi, good morning. Good morning, uh, what do you want, want to say? I just want to bring to attention the fact that this guy should be taken in by the Football League and probably, you know, reprimanded severely. This guy has interrupted so far four straight poker, tennis. He's threatening to disrupt the golf again this weekend. He has openly admitted he finances Just Oil. Now, he should be he should be made to pay for this. You're a talk sport radio station, sport. You shouldn't be giving him any airtime, or you should be bringing him to justice about this. Well, we've asked him to come on and ask question, answer questions about this, and he's refused to do so. So, they, they, I mean, apart from yeah. asking him to do that, we can't really do too much more. We're having the debate about it now for this for that why, reason, why, Simon. Why the, foot, why the football need not um, reprimanding him and taking him to task over this? He's disrupting sport. Well, and, well, he would say he's not disrupting sport. He would say he has made donations to the group that is behind the disruptions. But that's the same. If you're donating to a group or donating to any institute, institute, you're part of what they're actually doing and achieving. Um, he will say. He would say, and I'm not. I'm not arguing for him, but he isn't here to answer you. So I would say, yeah. for he would turn around to you and say, but it needs to be done. Well, you know, I don't think you know. <laughs> we can't. We can't have this because sooner or later, this is going to escalate, and somebody's going to get severely hurt at one of these events. Because people like myself, we work hard daily. You know, sport, sport is our outlet. Mm. That's where we go and enjoy our time. And these people are just like stepping in. When, when I'm at the cricket on Thursday, I'm paying £85, £90 pound for a ticket. If it was disrupted, I'd be fuming. Yeah, Absolutely. certainly one of the things that has happened over the course of the summer is, is that um, the Just Up Oil group, it appears has lost a lot of support, lost Rightly so. a lot of, uh, you know, Bunch of clowns. goodwill. Um, as a result of his actions disrupting sport.